Hi, and welcome to another episode of Anyways. Uh, we're, today we're going to be discussing No Other Sons and Daughters, which is episode nine of season one of television series Deadwood. I'm Ben. I'm Steven. <coughs> I'm Chad. And in this episode, uh, let's see uh, what happens <sighs> in a brief overview. Well, we start r- up almost right off where we left off, uh, just in the morning. With uh, which has become par for the course. Yes, it's like twenty-four hours basically per episode, almost. Um, so, Alma, Alma. Well, Trixie and Al. <laughs> right. Yeah, Trixie and Al. Pretty much, like yeah. they wake up and Al wakes up Trixie with like slamming the gold nugget down, down yeah. on the, uh, the end table. How much more of these can I expect? None. <laughs> piss real quick in my chamber pot right here (laughs) yeah like last episode we saw her nervous when she she turned away from him after slapping him yeah but then this episode she's more confident and she practices saying no several times Mm -hmm. yeah and then he he goes over and pisses loudly in his onesie pajamas Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then sits down and says he looks like the Grinch (laughs) he says something like Life is one vile task of another. Yep. And when they got you by the short hairs, you can't, you can't show any, you know. He's basically trying to just justify what he's uh, been doing his entire life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he seems very afraid. He says uh, everything changes, but it'll be all right. Do you think he's he's constantly trying to groom people to be him? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think he. He may be talking slightly about his fear and worry over Trixie at that moment, but he's sure. also talking about this fear and worry over the annexation. I think he might think that he doesn't give a shit, but he, he may, at least in terms of this episode, he certainly gives a shit about Trixie in the scene yes. where he's, he gives us this speech where he's like, everything changes, don't be afraid, annexation will be okay. And then he switches to talking about you know, uh, her trying to kill herself. And he, mm-hmm. he says, he, he can't say it while looking at her, he just walks away and he just says, don't do that again. And yeah. It's, and it's, it's, uh, but it's kind of touching. Yeah. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. It's a, it's as, uh, uh, endearing as, as Al can be. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, you know, anyway, there's more to say about Al, but I'm a little afraid of jumping ahead of this episode. No, it's fine. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. I, I don't remember what how the Al and Trixie scene ends. I think just with him walking away. Yeah, um, I think so. He gets dressed. He gets out. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, according to, to your list, we next have the the judge. Uh, I believe so. Like uh, the 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 fellow comes in and like you know just kind of lays down for Al like uh, what comes next in terms of this is know, this is. Before, what's his name comes in. Before uh, the moron, what's his name? John Johnny. Johnny. Oh well, that's that's directly afterward, almost or uh, isn't it? Uh, we're let's make sure because, like, I think, I think what happens is that. Uh, no, he talks to John. John yeah. Johnny Johnny, come, Johnny and then. Yeah, this and, the synopsis skips Johnny as well. It, I don't know, but it, it does seem like it does seem like something else happens with the ju- before the judge arrives. But no, no, I'm pretty positive. Like that, the the thing with Johnny happens. Like you know, he pro- you know Al promotes him basically. Yeah, and that happens like, before the judge. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, I, I understand where that's you guys are. that mm-hmm. that's, that's what I thought. I mean, yeah. because like I remember like before he walked out of the room, he opens the door and I'm like, is he about to just leave this guy in the room? It's yeah. like, this is such an odd thing. And then he's he, been so careful to kick everyone out of his room before yeah, locking then, the and, door. And then he walks down and then he says, what, what, what does he say? I just fled my own I fled my own here, office. Okay, let, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Right after Trixie leaves the room, he looks out on the new building, a new sign in town that says Charlie Utter and Freight. Mm-hmm. You're right, and he right. says, he no, he talks to Johnny and Johnny's confused by his conversation in a very funny way yeah. where he's basically like, for Sim and Phil, you know, I didn't think ahead and uh, for Sim and Phil should have been doing what Charlie Utter is doing. Yeah. And he wa- I want you to take uh, for Sim and Phil's place. And, and Johnny says, for Sim and Phil is dead. 
And then, like, and then slowly he he learns that he's going to be the new road agent. And there's this very funny scene where he 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 tells Dan, him Johnny not to tell Dan after Johnny has just told Dan what's happening. And uh, and then he goes to see Ma- Magistrate Clyde. Yeah, right. Like, and it, I mean, Johnny comes down the stairs and is like. Hey, so sh- what should we tell Dan about our new venture? You who know, is he, just Dan, who is standing right feet away there, uh, states it all plainly, and and I was like, yeah, let's keep Dan in the dark, you know, just like <laughs> sarcastically, thing, you know, yeah. just like, and then and then the it. judge walks yeah. in, yes, yeah, and then starts talking about bribes and how to form a government, and well, well briefly, what are your what's you how do you rate Johnny's chances of being a road agent? Well, he seems like a Complete idiot on he's all a fronts. So it's idiot. Um, so he's about as good as uh, Persimmon Phil in in this because mm. Persimmon Phil was basically just a suck up who was also just a fucking idiot. Yes, he was. Um, I think Al confirms it, or Al and Dan discuss it and mention that he was. Yeah, I mean he's he's a complete suck up. So I mean. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're kind of just on the level. Mm, Man. Okay. Um, Well, when Magistrate Claggett comes in, he's this very uh, stern-looking man uh, played by, I think, Marshall Bell is the actor's name. And uh, Marshall Bell? Marshall Bell. Bell? He's the actor. He's he's the mean dad in Stand By Me. I think he's the coward in Starship Trooper. Wrong kid died. Oh, no, 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 no. No, in, 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 well... And stand by. Oh, okay, I got, I got you. I got you. Wrong Sunday. Yeah, yeah, right. That's just amazing that his name is Marshall <laughs> Bell. We, I should double check, but I think it's something like that. Yeah. I always confuse him with the guy who is in Sledgehammer, but it's not the guy who's in Sledgehammer. Mm. It's this other guy. Um, but anyway, Marshall Bell comes in and he's like, you know, this town will get annexed. And he's, yeah. he roll, rattles off this wonderful legalese where he's like, you can lay claim to a property, property by simple use, just by making improvements on a property, you own it. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it sounds very by the book and legal. Yeah. And then slowly mm-hmm. Al's just like staring knives at him and he gets him to say, well, how much do we have to bribe you? What's exactly. the fucking number? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's uh, very quickly, he, he's start, well, he, start, he, well, he starts bringing up the Chicago thing. Yeah. He's like, you murdered somebody in Chicago. And you need to pay me $5,000. And that's right? when he's like, I got you by the balls. Yeah. He's like, so you have to Play ball by my rules. Yeah, and then that's when he's like, "Okay, well, things are trying to make more sense." You, you've given me five thousand dollars. It's an actual number that I can run with. Okay, so then after I paid this five thousand dollars, then we can start talking about how to f- form this quote unquote municipality or mm-hmm. whatever the fuck we are. And he's just like this mild little guy who speaks in like lawyerly terms and he gets out this ink pen and he gets these like glasses. Yeah, like that the downturned lenses almost. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he very casually says that there's a, you know, you need to, you, you have a warrant out for your arrest and you want to have that taken care of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a beautiful, like. Uh, and $5,000, which is like a fucking that's a lot. huge amount. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that would be like, what, like. Fucking fifty thousand dollars now or something is like insane. I don't know what the yeah, but like I mean, it would be like crazy. A nice amount. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, you know, again, we kind of side with Al by the end of the scene. And yeah. Like this, this, this guy's shaking him down. Well, because mm-hmm. like legalese, I mean, that always makes like normal people side with regular folk who are up against it. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of bought into the judge because I was like, well, you know, like, you know, he's just talking about how cool it is that you can go to your property and improve it and then you own it yeah pretty exciting thing but then but then i mean al's correct in it he's he's blackmailing him Mm. yes um after that uh we get uh ellsworth and the widow garrett i think right yeah and they uh are Uh, discussing her her claim mm -hmm. yeah and this is when this is when bullock comes in and and introduces Ellsworth to the widow Garrett, and then Alma is just like making fucking eyes, sex eyes at him, and then he's making sex eyes at her. And he's like, "Oh, you're just gonna drop this man off with me, and you're not even gonna 
have sex with me or whatever. <laughs> is exact quote. That's pretty much what what is said. She and says she then, hopes it's not the end of their relationship. Yeah, and, pretty much. And yeah. you're you're annoyed by the flirtation between the widow Garrett and Bullock. I'm I'm annoyed with it only because I know that it's going to end with them having sex, and they just need to do it mm. and get it over with. And it's been happening for like episodes now, so it's like. After a certain point, you're just like, do it, just just do it, and then get and then deal with the consequences afterwards because it's gonna happen no matter what. Well, it seems like so far the you know the basic pattern of any kind of man woman relationship in this show is either it's an immediate transactional sure thing where you know prostitute and John, or it's a drawn out. Like courting, slow courting. Like not, we're not even courting yet. We're just like making all these, like you know. Yeah, that's been happening for like four comments. fucking episodes yeah. or something with with Alma and and uh, Bullock. So uh, by episode, uh, no, by by season three, then it'll get to that. I'm sure. <laughs> and by, by the rate finally, we're going they'll, at, they'll they'll have sex in season three. We, we shall see. Um, and finally, we can just move on after that. <laughs> Um, also in the scene all of their interactions are going to be like this for the rest of the episode there's like two other interactions yeah. and they're both just like just fuck and get it over with <laughs> well, so we can just gloss over those well, when they come up they're both really prim and proper characters yes. sure Miss, the widow Garrett is dressed always in like layers of finery and then, like, up to the shit, neck like up, up to the, the chin and it's like and, yeah God. and he always has a complete black so in mm-hmm. their last scene together, you noted an interesting thing, which was that they look like they have similar facial features. And you said, it's like, swat, tra- put, tra- put, put his facial hair on her face, and it's like the same person. <laughs> I love their I love their flirtation. I am excited. I can't get enough of their flirtation. I love the scene. And they're like, dressed exactly the same. They're just like prim and proper prudes who, uh, you know, they're you know they're other time. At and least, like, at least she's like not just, taking laudanum and he's not like killing people. And you just yeah. want them to fuck and just get it over with. It's like it's fine. Yeah, it's okay. Well, actually, I mean, we'll get to. But you find out why it's okay later. But anyway. Well, we know at this point that he is married. We've known that. We know. He that mentions he's it to m- Wild Bill in episode four or three. Okay. Just I, for like a second. I don't even really remember that, but um, we find out why him being married is not a problem. Or it's, yes. It's a different type of problem. It's a different type of problem. It's like not... It's a different type of problem, but also in like modern terms, it would not be a problem. Right. It's it's not like, oh, I, I dearly love this woman who I, you know, met and we fell in love and it was just a thing. It's... We'll get to that. What's the next scene? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. We we have to uh, discuss uh, Ellsworth. Oh, Ellsworth's great. Yeah, yeah. Ellsworth, Ellsworth, who has, you know, fixed the trial of William B. Hickok. Yes. Who has uh, uh, faked finding a gold claim. Yes. And has lied, you know, despite being a very lovely individual. I mean, fake finding a gold. I mean, he found a gold claim. He did. For them. He left out the part where he saw his, her. Uh, husband's murder. Yes. And yes, but but the gold claim was real. That's true. That's true. And he was not, you know, he didn't withhold that. Yeah, and he's under threat of death. Yes. So, but and he immediately gets along with Sophia, the orphan girl, mm-hmm. and yep. he immediately charms as all people do. Yeah. They all. Yeah, exactly. They all mm-hmm. get along with her. They play hide and go seek and whatever. And he he charms the widow, and uh, and he's got a job. But he doesn't charm her because it's like a thing that he has to no. do. It's just like, you know, I mean, he even says like, I'm just a, you know, motherfucker that stays in creek beds. He's like, I don't know anything about mining veins and fucking gold. They get to find somebody else that does that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's like very forthcoming about everything. And she's like, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. It's he's a- like, but you found it. Yeah. And you understand that it's there. <laughs> so great. He's extremely likable. Yes. Um, all right, and then uh, I think I think the next scene is uh, isn't the next scene the um, the guy finds the letter. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we get the scene. Is he the in the Irish, episodes? Irish fella. There's no. an Irish fella. He play. He's most famous for playing Scott Farkas in A Christmas Story, and he's like, whoa, he's he's this dude. Wow. I think ah. I think his name is like something Ward. But anyway, he 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 basically says one time he was near the creek. After Wild Bill died, 
and he and he like shit himself. He shit some... himself. Yeah. And he took off his pants, and then recently he was down by the creek again, and he found his pants. Yeah. And he remembered that there was a letter in those pants. But there was no shit on the letter. Yeah. And, and he and he reassures Farnham like there's no shit on this letter. It was in like the front pocket or whatever. Yes. Like there's no so there's no shit on it. Yeah. It's a very long story about. About pooping shitting himself. And pooping his pants. <laughs> yeah. Getting this in his is cups. Like, this is like the third or fourth time there's been like basically just a long, drawn-out shit joke. Mm-hmm. Which is great. I have no problem with a shit joke. Again, it's trying to go for like Shakespeare side characters, I think. Like it's like... Sure. But... Yeah. Uh, poop. Yeah, but poop. Mm-hmm. I mean, but yeah, but no, but Shakespeare had poop jokes, I think. Which but is fun. But it's like... Uh, I mean, he did. He did. But it's just like... It's fun. I... I... I um... I enjoy that scene, and he does a character that just shows up, and we've never seen him interact no. with Farnham. And Farnham's no. just like, and Farnham immediately shakes him down for this very prized letter, which is a you know Wild Bill's last yeah. testament right before he was shot. And it's just like, yeah, you you never saw this, and and you uh, you should be glad that I'm not gonna fire you, basically, or yeah. whatever the fuck, um, for shit in your pants, yeah. <laughs> for being an alcoholic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, after that is... Uh, uh, well, we're back at the smallpox uh, tent. Uh, back at the smallpox tent with the fucking uh, preacher showing up. He's got problems. Uh, he's he, always got fucking problems. He smells smells death upon him. Yes. Like his flesh is rotting. Because he's a psycho. Him. Because he is deteriorating mentally, yes. it seems like. and uh, I mean, half his body isn't working anymore. Right. And he's smelling rotting flesh from and, himself. And well, but he realizes this after talking to Jane. Be like, "Do you smell basically like rotting flesh?" And she's like, "No." And then he's like, "Oh, and, okay." Well, and she thinks sense. it's a, she thinks it's a veiled kind of like comment about like whiskey on her breath. Sure, because she's getting deep into she's the been sauce. she's been soused for yeah. like weeks now. Yeah. Or a week. I don't know how long it's been Deadwood. It's it's <laughs> the timeline in this show it's is been so insane. It's been forty eight hours. It's it, it, everything from the beginning of the show until now has been forty eight hours. No, no, so. no. <laughs> we were at least nine episodes. It's got to be nine days. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, she gives a really beautiful. Uh, she dresses him down. Yeah, mm-hmm. for not admitting that his arm doesn't work and his eye doesn't work, and he mm-hmm. he has a wonderful like Coen Brothers moment where he's like. This is the good eye. This is the eye to look at. Yeah, this yeah. is you know, yeah. Like, look, this at, one's look like me in this the fuck eye. Off over here. Yeah. Yeah. And she says, "You got to work up through your nerve to consult with Doc." And it, it's a it, she cares enough to yell at him. But because he won't consult with a science-based thing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess That's he's it. like he's like a a Christian scientist, or is that the thing where you don't want to go to the doctor at all? Is that a Christian? Okay. Well, yeah, Christian <laughs> science is like that, you know, no no medicine whatsoever. No medicine. But I don't know if he's that particularly, but he seems to be yeah. very much like God's going to take care of me, except when I don't feel the love of Christ, and then I guess I'm just forsaken. Yeah, he's it's, a Christian in the like 1800s. The, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, because I, I don't think he, he was, the actual Reverend Smith wasn't particularly, I don't think he was anything weirder than like a Baptist or anything. Yeah, I think he, Sure, he, but it's also the 1800s, yeah, so, so it's yeah. like... Oh, my flesh is rotting. I can smell that it's rotting, so I'm going to die soon or something. Right. You know? It's I, very, very creepy descriptions. Yeah, I, I smell the, the, the rotting flesh from my body. When I read the scripture, I don't feel the love of Christ anymore. What have I done to deserve it? <laughs> what, 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 what is my problem? Like, why, mm. why did I... What did I do to deserve this? But and it's even if like, he had yeah. a play, you know, like what medical help can he really get that we can fix his situation? He can't. And he says, I no longer feel Christ's love. And Jane responds, Join the fucking club. <laughs> Join the, the fucking club. All of us. Yeah. Join the fucking club. Yeah. The club of the fucking rest of us. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like a, she's really shows a lot of compassion, but she immediately starts drinking heavily as mm. a result of it. I assume yeah, it's kind of bashing her head against a fucking wall later. Mm-hmm. But. So, uh, and Joni is looking for a, a, a place of her own, basically, at yeah. this point. And she's, she's going down into the, uh, I guess, sort of the Chinese district where the... Uh, where Sai has bought 
plot of land. A plot of land. Yeah. And, yeah, but and, we, and Al has pointed that out in previous episodes. Mm. And it's like, oh, he's a very, he's a forward-thinking person. And then that's also where uh, uh, Charlie Utter yes. has set up shop. And then they run into each other. Well, just before she leaves the Bella Union, we see her, like, there's a lot of focus on her gloves. So, yeah. like, her reaction to having to shoot a girl in the head in the last episode is wearing gloves uh, and, like, drinking a teacup. Interesting. And, and she talks to Eddie Sawyer uh, about their employer and how dangerous he is. Mm-hmm. You know, from the show perspective, I feel like they're turning the cards over. Last episode, we saw Joni and Sai's relationship. Now we're seeing Eddie Sawyer. Yeah. A and lot. A lot of it, which yeah. was surprising. Um that's a great actor. What's his name? Ricky uh, J. Yeah. Ricky J. R- rest in peace very recently. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he died. I didn't know he died. He died like a few months ago. Yeah. Holy shit. No, yeah, he's he's incredible. I've loved him uh, yeah. in like everything I've ever seen him in. And uh one thing I really liked about this episode, it, it pertains to nothing in the plot, but like you see like some of the things he does with cards. Yes. And, like that's something he was uh very much known for. Like he was a magician. Yes. And, and he a was card a mechanic. Yeah. Like he was like one of the best in yeah. terms of like like what he could do with a yes. deck of cards, yes. and like you can see this in this episode. And like, it's yeah, I mean, like it's impressive to watch him, like even just uh, casually shuffle, shuffle cards yeah. casually. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He was like a pendulette or whatever. Yeah, that'd like be the same. Yeah. Did a uh, you know? Okay. Bathroom break. Bathroom break. Still rolling. Oh yeah, okay. I got you. I'm. Um, and while uh, while Eddie Sawyer and Joni are kind of grieving over their shared traumatic experience, Al Swearingen comes in with a cup of coffee, <laughs> pours their cup of coffee, and then just and and then says, you know, meeting two hours at my place. Oh, because uh, so he also goes to he also goes to um, uh. Saul and Bullock's place Mm -hmm. and says something and then he tries to go to uh, Merrick's place place, knocks on the window and then like the glass fucking (laughs) shatters out of it almost into his coffee cup yes and he's like (laughs) fuck and he's like he knocks on to get more of glass fucking falls out and he's like well, fuck is Merrick, and then he fucking walks away, and then he, and then that's when he ends up over it. Well, he insults Merrick. uh, Well, he always insults Merrick. He um. Some people point out in other uh, online reviews, this is one of the few times where we see Al just out and about. Like, a lot of times he's just in the gym. Yeah, like right. He, this is rare in that he's, you know, and later he blames his headache, headache on the fact that he was out in the open, open air. Open air, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But there, there's also, who else does he, he talks to, he goes into uh, Saul and Bullock's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and he says, what, what you said when we were reviewing, you're like, that's probably the most racist thing that was ever sh- said in the show. And it was About he, centuries of inbreeding. Yeah, he says know. to Saul Star. And it's just like, and it's in the middle of complimenting him. He's like <laughs> complimenting him, and then he says this incredibly anti-Semitic remark to Saul Star, the only Jewish character in the show. Yes, and it's also seriously the most racist thing that I think might have been said in the show so far. Yeah. It's it's like, whoa, f- yeah. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's kind of mitigated. I think David Milch is Jewish, um, so maybe that is a little bit of a. But the show will, sure, will continue but, to have characters say incredibly offensive things. Yeah. And it, and I think even the about department of, yeah, all a, of them. like anti-Semitic remarks, I think it will get even worse. That, like that's mm. that's not a patch. That's par for the course. Yeah, um, but it's it's another example. As Al is leaving after he says this, these things to them, he looks around. And he says, "You've got a nice place here. You've done great with this." And so it's it's just kind of nice. And anyway, he runs around and then. Uh, Charlie Utter and Joni Stubbs meet mm-hmm. in front of uh, his new postal delivery service, and Charles, Charlie Utter has a new frock coat. Mm-hmm. And, very uh, proud of it. He very awkwardly talks to Joni Stubbs. Can I also say that every time I hear Charlie Utter talk, I always just hear Charlie Utter saying his own name? Yeah. <laughs> he says it. Is hey, it? I'm Charlie Utter. Charlie Utter. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, oh, thank you, man. Uh, oh, thank you, man. Oh, I'm Charlie Otto. <laughs> That's and like he has such a great accent. And Ben pointed out earlier that he's British. I think so. Mm. He's Dayton Cali, yeah. And um, I just love hearing him talk and and just saying his own name, like Charlie Utter. 
is such a fucking southern hick name. Yeah. That it's so great. <laughs> shit here. kicking name. Yeah, just basically. a shit kicking name. And another mm-hmm. real guy. Real guy. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is great. Um and as we pointed out, I think before we started, he can say business. Oh, he can uh, say business yeah, like nobody's yeah. business. Most of the characters always say the word <laughs> bid, business as business, but there's, uh, in particular, uh, Timothy Oliphant uh, over pronounces things as befits its character. Business. But he says business, business. Business. In a very precise way. Business. Which makes it a weird way to say, he shouldn't be saying business, he should be saying business. He shouldn't uh-huh. be hitting the B and the in right. so hard, yeah. but he's uh, he's a proper actor, and so he so he does his due diligence and pronounces all of the letters in the words that are in business, yeah, mm-hmm. and just being out with it. But what, what what did you guys think of Joni and Charlie Utter's uh, interaction? Oh, it was it was, it oh, it was, was cute, d- delightfully adorable. It was cute, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, you kids, yeah, and he's like. You know, she's she finally like owns up like I'm I'm opening a brothel. And it's like, oh, that's that's great, that's great. And it's like, and like oh, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a big meeting of all the like minds or whatever in the she'd community and stuff. Yeah. And he'd never heard of it. And he's like, oh, oh uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, I'm 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 yeah, I was I was invited over there. I'm 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 gonna be over there soon. As you know, uh, basically he 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 offers the. I'm going to be fashionably late. Yeah. Argument. Which, you know, to they, her. Did, did Which is exist? amazing. Did that exist in the 1800s? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it did. I'm sure like pretty much everything in our, you know, but it's just like, what I love about that conversation, what strikes me is that what you said, which is she, she's like, what kind of business are you? He asked, what type of business are you opening up, Joni Stubbs? And she replies, after this incredibly cute conversation where they talk about his frock coat and she's just so, it's so nice. And she's like, yeah, I'm opening up a brothel. And then he's like, he always like, this is a good place for business. And he's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, but I'm just a whore. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like this meat cute. Yeah. And then it goes goes straight into her. But he doesn't flinch. No. And he's mm-hmm. like such a almost modern person or like a good person that he's yeah. like, he just he doesn't judge her and he just continues to appreciate her. Yep. Um, it, it's a good scene. Um, after that. Uh, we have the meeting in the gym. Pretty much, uh, I, I can't. I, I'm pretty sure it pretty much goes right into yeah. that. And like, uh, yeah. Oh, he sees at the end of Al walking around. He sees Merrick in the thoroughfare, and Merrick explains that he's been getting cleaning supplies. And then, he, and then Al, <laughs> while coffee cup in hand, says, "We're, we're forming a fucking government, you dumb bastard." <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's uh, again, it, you you like it, Chad, because he's dumping on Merrick. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it's it's almost again it's it's incredibly charming. You're like, who is this Al Swearingen? How much cooler can he get? But you know, you know, he they need to to form a, a, or an organization. If the next we see the beginning of the meeting, and they've got out the peaches and pears yeah. from from the previous meeting. Yeah, and he you know lay them out at at random intervals. Yeah, and <laughs> and there's this nice little moment. Where they're all standing around and they don't know what to do and they're still waiting for other people. So like Ricky Jay is inspecting the table. I guess he's trying to figure out where like the hidden stuff is in the table. But he's also like uh, separate from everybody else. Yeah. So like he's not he's not a part of right, the he actual. Is. He doesn't like even get to sit here. at the table. Yeah. No, he doesn't get to sit at the table proper like what we're sitting at mm-hmm. right now. He would be like sitting off to the side, right. over behind me or something. Yeah. And 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 so. He gets yeah. to chime in later and then have Psy give him the yeah. side eye. When he's, at, when he's asking about like what what happens like, when uh whores uh you know what what, what how how are we gonna tax that? Well he's just <laughs> saying would would women have the same rights to to as men in terms of these Pr- businesses? Pretty I much, think. yeah. And so but, basically but, asking, but, it, but it was something about taxes, wasn't it? Yeah, I, th- I think it was it was, it was something about it was like, yeah. It was, it was about female brothel owners. Yes. Basically, it was about Joni Stubbs and sure. would she have control over her own business? Sure. And basically, he was asking like a feminist question, like, let's think about the rights of the women in this camp. Yeah. Right. He gets and shut then down. Everybody just goes, ha, and then just keeps going. The one guy who doesn't <laughs> even know what he's talking about is like, what does that have to do with the price of fish? And yeah. Just, yeah. 
Yeah, and then they're like, the true purpose of this meeting is to form a fake The true purpose of this meeting is to get E.B. Farnham to become mayor of the town. Ad hoc. Ad hoc. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because that is incredible, where where he's just like, well, who's going to become mayor? And I volunteer myself. And then Al is just like, is anybody else opposed or whatever the fuck? And I think one person for a is, second, uh, is it Merrick? Yeah. Like, is about to like? It looks like he's about I'm to be to like something. Uh, he's like, well, <laughs> Eb is the fucking mayor. And so, the, <laughs> and the next question is, he, he deflects to, he's like, mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. Immediately, it's yeah. just like, it's just like, well, so mayor, what, uh, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> yeah, and, and Farnham, it's incredible. Farnham says that the you know what makes an organization real is that it collects money, be it temporary, uh, permanent, or ad hoc. And so... And again, this is... This is... Um, Square Engine's uh, chosen acolyte. Mm-hmm. This is somebody that he's groomed, and so he knows what to say. Yeah. And it's like... He has no problem making E.B. the mayor, because that's detached from him... And then also he's going to say things like, "Let's start taxing uh, the camp mm. and get them to pay for the bribes." <laughs> <laughs> they don't even like code it with anything different. It's like, no, no, no. Let's get let's get the camp to pay for the bribes so that we can keep doing the thing that we're doing. Well, Bullet brings up the idea that that, that maybe a purpose of the government would be to provide goods and services to the people. Again, this this as with the plague episode, this is very shocking to me. Like yeah. just like. I thought about all these people as killers, and the mm-hmm. idea that they suddenly form a fucking government is uncanny, but also feels perfectly right. Right. Like, of makes, course, of course, it does because that's what and like what you have to do in order to form a society. So it makes perfect sense, yeah. and it's. But you're just like, oh, okay. So I guess my founding forefathers were also killers. Yes. Who also, mm-hmm. just randomly want to protect their businesses. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Of but, course. You know, having grown up, like, for example, in, like, you know, this area, like, in, I grew up in, in Germantown, Tennessee, and uh, there's a lot of municipality, and it's all very bland. And, like, the furthest thing. It's a very thing, affluent uh, center of things. You know, yeah. In sure. The Memphis suburbs. Sure. And yes. it, it, it seems so resoundingly bland, and it is incredibly flooring to think of. Open corruption, yeah. Among uh, you know, regardless of the state of, the moral state of that municipality or any municipality, uh, the idea of hired killers or killers and thieves as your governors openly is. But the fact, but the fact that it it, it it's still happening now. Yeah. But that uh, uh, it's more masqueraded than it was two hundred years ago. But it's basically the exact same thing. Yeah. It's like some random guy gets elected. Oh, I'm the fire chief or whatever and he doesn't know anything about anything yeah it's just like he's been elected to make sure that fires don't happen yeah (laughs) yes well i mean yeah and also this is a private meeting among the town elders so the citizens of deadwood aren't even privy to this meeting right um which is kind of true to small municipalities yeah they don't have any idea of who their town elders are yeah it's just it happens and then it's over. Yeah, and most people don't realize that it's happening. Yeah, um, to make it political. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I would say that. Please, please vote. Yeah, I would say that <laughs> the, the level of corruption is probably just as high now as it was in the eighteen hundreds. A hundred percent. And that uh, you know, we yeah. I mean, and, and it is our tendency to say, oh, those people back two hundred years ago, they are pretty barbaric. And I think that this show, yeah, this show basically is. It's lovely. Uh, so this, I think, anything else do we want to say about this meeting? Uh, I remember Farnham uses a ash tree as a gavel and covers everyone in smoke ash, or ash. As a what? A you, gavel. A like, gavel. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then the meeting is adjourned, I guess. Uh, and uh, so we've got like Charlie Utter as a fire marshal. Basically, we've got who is the health? Uh, Bullock. 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 Which Bullock I, is the health marshal. Okay, now hold on. Let, this is something I wasn't entirely clear on. Like, 
who was arrested several times for grave robbing? Was it Doc Cochran? Okay, that makes perfect sense this because is, that was okay. A, okay, this is this is something that's strange to me. So they're saying that Doc Cochran was. Is, is alleged to have robbed several graves. No, no, he admitted during the meeting that he robbed, he was arrested seven times for grave robbery. Which is pretty typical of like the early medical uh, education, you know, established. Like, yeah. I mean, like, that's how you learned okay. anatomy, is you, so, you got dead bodies. What's that, weird is we don't see it happen. Well, no. I no, mean, it's not that. What's weird is all we hear is. He can't be the health commissioner. Health commissioner because of that, because he's been arrested, huh? So it's Bullock. Yeah, and so then he's like, "Well, I would have been sheriff, but yeah, he, he was trying to avoid being sheriff. He was trying to avoid being sheriff, and so that's why he volunteered for health commissioner. And uh, Doc Cochran was trying to avoid being health commissioner. That's why he said he was arrested seven times for grave robbing." Mm-hmm. And then Charlie Utter just was fire marshal for some reason. For some I, reason, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why he became fire marshal. Because he was there. Yeah, because yeah. he was there. But um, well, let's just go to that scene with the uh, uh, Saul. I mean, we've pretty much discussed it. They talk about the meeting, and then Saul discusses how he asks Bullock if uh, he thinks Trixie is pretty. <laughs> That's which is amazing. And if, also, he doesn't say Trixie first. He's like, you know that gal. And like, like he doesn't know her name. Yeah. And then Bullock is like, "Yeah, you mean Trixie? Like you said her name was? You know, like it's just that coy kind of thing. Yeah. Like just, I don't know, playing coy, at pretending like he, you know, isn't that interested. You know, and it's like pretty. I feel like Bullock kind of gets it. Like, yeah, you, that girl you think is pretty. It's Trixie. like it's like they're like maybe thirteen years old. And yeah. He's asking his best friend to yeah. approve of his of his girlfriend to be. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it's pretty sweet. And then he immediately goes off to the the gym. Mm-hmm. Let's see. And they man, yeah. there's a further scene with uh, the Reverend and Doc Cochran in the the tent. The smallpox tent, where Doc Cochran, you know, again, Jordan of this review show said, <laughs> I, "I will, I will throw this quote out a, a thousand times because it keeps getting proved true." You know, the doctor prescribes some sense getting talked to you, and one hundred percent. Doctor is like, you know. What does the doctor say to, to the reverend? I mean, he basically says what Jane said, which is yeah. like, admit that you are in pain and it's not God's will. But, yeah. But the reverend really doubles down. With, uh, if this is God's will, then he's a son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. He's mm-hmm. a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the, the reverend thinks that, you know, it's his portion of suffering and that it's part of God's plan for him to suffer. Right. Which is an incredibly cruel uh, thing for that character to go through is like it's he seems very uh, terrified. Well, um, and he's he's not a, a it, hmm. he definitely wants to uh, help everybody, you know, as as out there and weird as he is, like you know, he's he's probably the most selfless person, although. To a fault, you know, doesn't really take care of himself. I mean, like with the, you know, the plague episode, you know, he seemed to be like the guy who was just right there, like, going to take care of the the smallpox, you know, uh, victims immediately. But, uh, you know. And, you know, he's... uh tragic now like oh he, yeah he's, he's super tragic and he's like you know and, and he doesn't seem to have, he, he talks about how he misses being able to reassure people 
about Christ's love, but you know, I don't know if he ever reassured anyone about Christ's love. He just <laughs> no, kind of like, no. <laughs> kind of like acted weird and like seemed like he was. We noted earlier having an orgasm during hymns, and he just yes, he 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 feels Christ's love, and he's yeah. really getting into it. But yeah. you know, yeah, I feel like maybe maybe I was a bit not quite on the mark with selfless, more like no, I mean. It, more like, uh, uh, kind of like he just has He's, this boundless. He cares about other people. Thing he, inside, yeah, you're no, right. He, he, does, he, helped, he does. He helped Bullock and Star move into their tent. That's true. He's, yeah. Um, let's see. He, he he does have a boundless love, but it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not tethered. It's not, no, it's not tethered at all. Tethered in reality. Tethered no. in like. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's evangelical, which it means is, he's programmed yeah. to spread his idea of the love constantly, which can be a little creepy if mm-hmm. you don't agree with it, or if you're not into that particular sect, you're just like, all right, well, now you know, you're know you operating with me because you've been commanded to by a, a higher power that's different from... Sometimes you we might differ and be like, oh, that's not exactly... But again, this is a this is a great character, and that's my own baggage about religion brought to this character. This character is is great and, and sad. Um, you have here written here on the sheet of paper, Mayor Farnham. So he's, he's mayor now. Mayor Farnham is at the gym, and the, a woman, a topless woman, is giving him a hand job. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. And uh, he's being like made fun of. I, I think he's just being. Everyone's looking at him in the bar and just like. Like just <laughs> Dan and Al and uh, Merrick are all just just shaking their heads and oh, what a terrible terrible guy and he he seems you know really happy it's the happiest we've ever seen Farnham mm-hmm. he's like he he takes off his hat and goes like that um, and then we have Saul comes into the gym yes and goes like makes a beeline for Trixie pretty much yep. it's, uh, and uh, there's a Fantastic shot. He he goes past um, Al. Al watches him go, and then like you know, goes right over to Trixie. There's a perfect shot where here is uh, here's Saul, here's Trixie, and there's Al in the middle in the background, kind of looking at him. And uh, it's it's just perfect. And you know, Sal saw this lovesick puppy, you know, for Trixie, and he's all gussied up. All gussied up, and Trixie's just kind of like, I don't know how to put it, like, just kind of like, I feel like she's appreciative of the attention, but like... Well, she says her boss is going to get mad at me. Yeah, and yes. she knows that, that, that like, this isn't, this isn't it. No. This ain't it, chief, you know, and like, you know, and meanwhile, Al's just kind of wary of the whole thing, as he probably should be. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know about should be, but like, yeah, who who knows? Well, what, I mean, Trixie should be here. really wary because I mean, Alice. Yes, yeah. You know, he's threatened to kill her, beaten her, put his foot on her neck, grabbed her crotch. Yeah. Threatened to kill her again, and now she's got this gasman on her, mm-hmm. and she's openly looking at him in front of yeah. Al. And yeah. anyway, it's, it shouldn't be that different from her Johns and her role as a prostitute, but for whatever reason, it's very different. Well, yeah. it's clear that he's like in love with her. Yeah. It's not a lust. It's a, this he's smitten. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that is, I guess, dangerous in this kind of line of work. And, you know, especially with what she has with Al. Yeah. I mean. And he doesn't seem to understand this at all. No. And she just says, he just says, come to my hardware store and I'll give you a special on hammers <laughs> <laughs> or axes. I didn't get that joke at all. I don't know. What I thought was. he said brooms. Uh, he said maybe, brooms. And then she said, yeah. I'll, if, you know, if I come to your store, I'll get an ax, a hammer and a chisel. Mm-hmm. And I don't. And then, and then he's like, I'll sell them all to you. And like, he, without asking what they're for. Yeah. You know, he's, he's so excited about whatever corny joke. And he does, uh, the actor it was, I forget the actor, John Hawks. Yeah. And his, the sides of his mouth go up and his eyes go really squinty. And it's like, he, he communicates <laughs> that he doesn't believe in the joke, but he's still like super smiling. He's just, and it's very cute. It's very like you, this guy really loves Trixie. And, uh, I don't know. And anyway, 
Yeah, he's going to sell her all those things, Mm -hmm. but not give her any of those things. And they're going to have sex. Is is that Mm. what you you think is going to happen with Trixie and Saul? What what are your predictions for the Trixie and Saul uh, plotline? I don't predict that they're going to do that. Hmm. I predict that at some point they're going to have sex. That's Mm. a common prediction you got. <laughs> you also think that of Dalma and uh, Seth uh, relationship, but anyway, that's you, that's that's like uh, obvious. It's though. written in yeah, the yeah. stars. Yeah, yeah. Mm. but Saul and Trixie, they're going to have sex. I don't know if it's going to be anything more than what it is. And that's okay. And how do you think Swear Engine's going to react? Unreasonably. How are we going <laughs> to get these fucks to pay more money now? <laughs> oh, okay. So you don't mm. think that Al will uh, be yeah. upset? Other than wanting more money? I think he might be upset at first, but I think it might be... Like, what's the long term? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen Mm -hmm. with this? We can't. We can't say anything. Well, I don't remember uh, much more past uh, past where we're at. Okay. Well, but anyway, I I enjoy that prediction. I think it's a cool prediction, and I wish I could tell you more about it because it's cool as fuck. Um, all right. Well, you know, then Saul goes back out in the night, and then uh, mm-hmm. we've we talked about the Reverend who thinks his flesh is rotting. Yes. Uh, and then we have, let's see, Joni. I think I guess we have a conversation between Joni and Sai. Is that what happens? So you have Joni striking. Yes, she she talks to Sai again, and it's it's a little bit more of the same, I guess. It's it's her saying that she's looking around, you know, uh, and he's like, good. Yeah, yeah, he he's playing along. He has that little dash of hair going down, yeah. so he looks a lot less bald, and he looks like a lot youthful, but he's still good gray, and he's mm. all like super done up. As Marcus uh, said a few episodes ago, he looks like Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> you know, like he just, but I've never thought about that, but he really kind of he's so immaculately dressed, and mm-hmm. yeah, you know, but he doesn't pay attention to Joni because he's going out after Eddie, as we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. and so he goes over to Eddie and he takes his his playing cards out of his hand and bams them yeah. on the table. Uh, and, and again, b- proceeds to like insinuate that he's uh, had sex with a twelve-year-old boy, and uh, Eddie is like steadfast. He's like, "No, I didn't do that." And and Cy alternately like is all over Eddie's face, and he's like physically looming over him, and and Eddie is basically just, uh, you know, tries not to uh, get angered. And the taking away of the deck, you know, too, is almost like a. I mean, we mentioned earlier Ricky J, you know, great card mechanic, and we see him shuffling very masterfully, and it's almost like you're just like taking away the power he has, you know, which is, you know, he's his, what the, he's a dealer. The thing you know, Ricky J is most famous yeah. for. Yeah, and it's and like saying char- "fuck you, Ricky J." Yeah. Well, yeah. the de- the the character is a dealer, and it's like yeah, taking away what power you even have here at this table. Yeah, putting it over here now. Let me lambast you with this, you know, with uh, this traumatic thing that you just experienced and, like, you know, thrown in in your face, like, you know, what... It, it, it's it's just... He's, like, throttling yeah. the, the Eddie. And it seems this. like, you know, he mentions that they've been working together for 17 fucking years. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, like, how did they ever operate prior <laughs> to this moment? Like, this is just rough. <laughs> like, how does Cy yeah. have any employees? Yeah. Um, all right, so it's a very tough scene, as we've talked about earlier, and mm-hmm. I don't remember how we leave it with Eddie, but he's like, he, he, he manages when one last thing. He's like, I forget, he says, why, I don't know what he calls, he, he gets one last dig, but, he, you know, Cy Tolliver threatens his life and walks mm-hmm. away. Um, all right, uh, I, we have, uh, I, I guess we're at the end of the episode. What are the... Widow Garrett and uh, and I like how you referred to Timothy Oliphant as justified. <laughs> yes, that's that's very that's cool. <laughs> um, 
But, Twitter Garrett and Justified. And then we, sexual tension in all caps. They say uh, goodbye, goodnight in this very mm-hmm. long, drawn out scene. Yes. And it all builds up to this one phrase, which is really wonderful, which is uh, he's, he's explaining how he reveals to her that he's married and she takes it on yes. the chin. And then she's like, why did you mention your brother as he's going out the door? And he's like, oh, my wife is his widow. My child is his boy. And it's revealed then that he's not, he's kind of not married. He's kind of in a marriage just to support his, his brother's uh, widow. Mm-hmm. Um, leading to the sex you predict. They're going to have sex. Yep. <laughs> um, but I mean, we, we don't know that. But it's, it's a lovely scene, and then she returns to her room and smooths her like buttoned-up mm-hmm. thing and blows out a candle. They're going to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Uh... <laughs> Let's make sure. Let's see if there's anything. Uh, let's oh. make sure they're not gonna fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there's there's one scene we missed, which is uh, Calamity Jane uh, is oh. is leaving the camp. She's going. She's going, and she she basically uh, is talking to uh, Charlie Utter, mm-hmm. and uh, she says, "This I don't like the direction this camp is going." And uh, I need to head out, and I can't be sober. I can't be drunk where Bill is, and I can't be sober at all. I think there's an implication that she's a little bit disgusted by the previous scene in the previous episode where Tolliver killed two children in the street and said, you know, why don't you guys protect your delicate fuck ab- sensibilities by turning the fuck away? And, you know, she's a little bit put off by that and how no one responded to it. And mm-hmm. And that's part and parcel of the fact that the camp is also becoming more civilized, and they have a government now. So she's, maybe she's reacting to that. She's also reacting to the fact that she doesn't like places that aren't wild and crazy. Anyways. Love to beavers slapping logs. You can't keep the gold from me. 